Now, everybody has a different story when it comes to building a business. To some, it's never an easy task to partake. And to some, they have very good stories of how they started from scratch and built their empires to profitability. And that's the reason why Bizna Kenya and MC Moments have partnered to bring you Biz Talks. Biz Talks. And here we shall be hosting mentors, people who have gone ahead of us, people who have created these empires, people who have also on the verge of creating these particular big businesses. And these lessons will be valuable for you, the business person, for you, the aspiring business person, the entrepreneur, so that at least you can make wise decisions when it comes to building that business. So every Friday at 8 a.m. on all business platforms, that's the Facebook and YouTube channel, Conversation still goes on. Thank you so much for joining us. Please tell a friend to tell a friend that our guest is in the house. Mark Mwangi is here. CEO and founder, Amitrak, the top 21 startup to watch in the country. My goodness, such an amazing guest. And we are really sure to get to know what is this all about, what's in stock. But first, as usual, let's warm me up, courtesy of Melvin. So welcome, first of all, to the show. Mark. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Good to see you. Thanks Good to have you me. here. Now, Thanks very quickly, uh, have you pipped through? I know I asked you to pip through. What is your choice? I think I'll take the lemon and ginger. Lemon and ginger. Yes, Excellent. Please. With hot water? Is yes, that good please. to go? Excellent. All righty. So, good to see you, man. And, uh, you know, I just pipped through. And I think today our customers, because we have a lot of them who come here, will get a lot of solutions, man. Because um, I was looking through the story of logistics in the country. And what you're doing, I'm sure our guys will be amazed. So, have you told your friends to really... Get to share, click on that share button, let everybody know that Amitrak is in the house, and if they don't know who Amitrak is, they're gonna be getting to know, uh, to see what to do around. How's it going, bro? It's going good, it's yeah? going good. <laughs> excellent, excellent. A lot of construction's happening on the roads here, uh, in, our, in our city, and uh, a lot of things happening, holding up people, but all is good. <laughs> I'm not seeing anything. <laughs> Is that the polite way of saying I was late? <laughs> no, no, no. You're only a minute late, but it's okay. It's okay. Um, uh, we have seen a lot of things happening. So, guys, as we are saying, uh, keep the conversation going. Click on that share button. Let everybody know that Army Truck is in the house. And uh, please let me know where are you watching us from? Where are you watching us from? Grab a cup of your hot Melvins. Uh, my goodness, what am I taking, by the way? I've been taking a lot of... Uh, Hibiscus, and I think I'm still going to take one. You know why? You don't need sugar. By the way, do you need some sugar? You no, get, no, you're good to go. Excellent. You don't need sugar. It has a way of just bumping your morning nicely. It does. So it does. Yeah, I, I, I'll give you some. You take home. You feel how it goes. Oh, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So now that you're in the house, Mac, it's good to see you here again. Um, we always start by asking the nice question. When people ask, who is Mac? Who do you say you are? Wow. Uh, Kenyan entrepreneur. Yes. Um, re recovering banker. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, you were a banker. Yes, I was. Yes. Yes. And uh, yeah, all I, I tr trying to be a good person. Okay, that's a good one. But the question is, why did you use the word recovering? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody wonder. I, hey, I guess it's just a way to explain the the the. The contribution an, 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 entrepreneur, an entrepreneur makes to the world is, yeah. is a little bit more impactful than, say, an employed okay. um, uh, city worker. So, All right. I, I, I don't know, I'm not sure why they use that word. I, I guess I just adopted it mm. um, like everyone else did. <laughs> good to know, good to know. So, quick question. I think you mentioned something about banker there. Maybe that would even give a bit of an answer. Uh, was it always for your entrepreneurship or this is something you picked up along the way? How was it for you? Sorry, I, I don't quite get that. It, it's more of, do you, do you see, did you see always yourself in entrepreneurship because now you're in business? Right, right. Or was it a transition from employment? No, actually, um, I'll be quite honest, Maina. I, I, um, my younger years mm -hmm. were, uh, let's say, less fortunate. Okay. So as I went through university yeah. and finished my degree, mm -hmm. I, I looked for safety. Where was that, by the way? Um, so I, I actually, I grew up in Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, I studied here and uh, I went to university quite young. Yeah. And uh, I went to university in the UK. Uh -huh. 
Um, unfortunately, when, when, when I got there, um, the, the, uh, due to unfortunate family circumstances, yes, uh, I was self-supporting quite young. Oh. And um, so uh, it was a bit of a struggle to get through my maths degree. Mm -hmm. And um, well, I'll just say it. I mean, to put myself through my maths degree, I actually drove a truck mm. in and around London full time. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then I did my master's degree full time as well. Okay. And that's how I managed to pay the fifteen thousand pounds you needed to get through university. Yeah. And it meant that when I finished, mm -hmm. um, my sole <laughs> goal in life at the time yeah. was security. Okay. Um, and so I went into banking, mm -hmm. and and I did that for a very long time. Okay. And and, and I guess when I say I'm recovering, yes. maybe that hopefully that <laughs> helps. So I was basically running away from. Yeah. I guess some, some, some part of me was running away from being poor. Okay. All right. Okay. Abdi Hussein, thanks a lot. Uh, some guys are already giving shout outs here. Okay. That's, a, that's an interesting way of looking at it. So I, I feel like you were immersed into it because you had to look for ways of survival there mm -hmm. for yourself, which is very nice. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that you drove a truck. <laughs> I did. That, that, yes, that so. means there's something else because, you know, we'll be touching about that with Army Truck. Uh, so then looks like it's a very nice transition to entrepreneurship and which now drives me to the question I mean truck first of all what's the first question I should ask you <laughs> why the name and what is the need that you have seen okay. that needs to be solved so so at the time we started army truck which was probably uh, late 2018 mm -hmm. The word, the, the, the word that every tech startup was using or the words used to describe tech startups was disruption. Yeah. And actually, we felt Amitrak was more of an enabler. Mm -hmm. So Ami is a French word for friend. Friend. So friendly truck. <laughs> so we, we, we're trying not to be scary. We're trying to, you know, tell people, you know, we're here to help. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's basically what's behind the name. No, I like the Ami name. Truck. Yeah. <laughs> a friendly truck. Is that a good way of saying it? Yes. <laughs> Speaking of which, now, um, of course, you've given up the genesis of the name. What then, from where you sat, looking through Africa, because I read about you talking about, you know, talking about the logistics story of Africa. Um, so then, what, what is this need you saw and you knew this is an opportunity? Yeah. The need was really two-sided. I think on the truck owner side, um, no, maybe better way to put it is, th yeah. there were constantly these informal brokers who uh, we found out sat between a cargo owner mm -hmm. and his uh, transporter. Yeah. And these guys, um, you could have up to three mm -hmm. between the two, okay. and they can take up to 60% <laughs> yeah, of the delivery fee. A lot of money. And, and then on top of that, they introduce a layer of complexity and opacity, which mm -hmm. means that if something happens to your load, yeah. it's very difficult yeah. for you as a, a cargo owner to understand what went wrong. What goes and wrong. If, some, if it gets damaged or stolen, yeah. then, you know, tough. Yeah. There's no compensation. Mm -hmm. So what Amitrak set out to do was to close that gap. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess just to make, to drive that point home, yeah. um, in, in Kenya, uh, 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 most the cost of most uh, goods sold, yeah, sixty percent of it can be transport, yeah, and that's like five times higher than it is in a developed market. Mm. And so, by closing this gap yeah. and connecting a transporter directly with the cargo owner, to the cargo owner, you can get rid of that. Wow, wow. Then, if you vet the driver and you vet the the, the vehicle and mm -hmm. you make sure the goods are insured, so if yeah. something happens, the cargo owner is compensated, mm -hmm. then you can really close that gap. Okay, and that's basically the role that Amitra tries to play. Okay. I guess you could also say that the process of finding a truck can be very manual and tedious right now. Mm -hmm. So if you're in an industrial area or yeah. in, you're, you're in Pangani or in Bakasi, you yes. walk out on the road, you speak to three or four drivers, you uh -huh. don't know if they're any good, you don't know if your goods will be insured. Absolutely. It's very difficult for you to compare across many of the transporters. Yeah. And so using tech, it's very easy for you to come onto our platform, speak to one of the 5,000 vehicles we have. Mm -hmm. We will arrange the pricing. You will see how they've been reviewed from the previous trips they've done on our platform. Yeah. And using that, 
nicely arranged information. It's very easy for you as a cargo owner yeah. to choose the vehicle you want. And we'll get into that actually on how this whole, uh, you know, your system works out because it's really fair from what I saw. And, you know, we'll be enlightening our viewers how this works. Uh, but the, I, I am still on the process of how, you know, you came up with this because at first maybe I thought you either try to transport something and then oops, it disappeared somehow. You know, people come up with many things. Mm -hmm. It could be a pain on something. So that's how people come up with, you know, solutions towards sure. that. But I love the fact that you have experience in this and really come into the, to change the, the game of how things are done, the trust levels, all those things, the tracking. I think that's, in fact, I must admit and forgive me for this. I came across Amitrag just a few weeks back after getting to hear about you and I was okay. like, what? Mm. I've had it rough sometimes with guys, you know, uh, you know, you, you transported some goods. Uh, it's not the same number. Things happen, you know, and maybe I'm speaking for the many who as well still are still trying to decipher how do we how do we have a trustworthy system that will transport our stuff. But we'll be talking about that. Please let me know that you're watching and where you're watching us from. Uh, Mac is around here. I want to give him time to seep something as he goes on. So let's get to um, how it works. Mm -hmm. Somebody's saying, okay, that's amazing. Uh, how does it work? It's really quite simple. We, yeah. um, uh, on, the, on, the, on the cargo owner end, you, if you're a cargo owner, you simply go on our website or you get the app, yeah. the mobile app. Yeah. There's a very short registration process. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's quite intuitive, so it's, it's almost like using Uber. Okay. So you just tell us, you know, where you, what, what, about your load, uh -huh. um, what kind of vehicle you need, uh -huh. uh, any special instructions for the driver. Okay. Um, we send that out to all the vehicles that could transport your load. Mm -hmm. um, in return, they can see all the details uh, laid out for them. They can see the trip on the map. Yeah. They can see where they need to go. Mm -hmm. They can see how far it is. Yeah. They can see what time they need to pick it up. Okay. Um, and using that information, they send their pricing to you as a cargo owner. Okay. Um, they can also see each other's prices. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they can obviously... It's a little competitive. Competitive, definitely. Um, and, 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 and then you as a cargo owner can see the driver's uh, initials, mm -hmm. how many trips they've done, yeah. what their rating is out of five stars. Wow and wow. the price at which they're offering to do the job. And, and using that information, uh, you can then decide which driver you'd like to okay. use. So let's speak from the point of drivers first. Sure. So someone is watching today, mm -hmm. they have an amazing truck, mm -hmm. and they would want to get on board it mm -hmm. on Army truck. They have an opportunity, right? Yes, they do. So all they need to do as well is call you up, register, and then you do your vetting to them and they're in. It's actually simpler. Uh, you download the app, Okay. And the registration process is all digital. Wow. So if I have a truck, my good guys who have trucks, just get in there now. Correct. <laughs> Correct. There's some doc, you know, you, you basically get the app, you, yeah. you, you put in your details, yeah. you um, uh, have to upload some documents, mm -hmm. um, your driving license, your logbooks, your insurances, because we have to make sure that our cargo owners are safe. Yes. Um, and the rest, you're wow. able to get jobs. You're in. Yeah. You're into business. <laughs> You know, I'm saying right. this because I have a friend who has been talking about, he has this amazing new truck, mm -hmm. but he still sometimes calls our guys, business, 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 what? Get in there, get in there. I don't want to call his name out. <laughs> Does it matter about the cargo size? Because do you have, what, is, what do you have on board? Is it from the huge trucks? Sorry, I don't know the big names, man. Mm -hmm. From the huge trucks mm -hmm. to the small ones, is it everybody on boarded or is it just for maybe the large scale guys only. Okay. So, so in Kenya, we, we work with the 28 ton truck, that's 30 ton trucks of the higher end. Yeah. Uh, we do have some border borders. Mm -hmm. So we do everything from a border border, a van, a pickup, a okay. three ton, a five ton, a seven ton, a 10 ton, a 15 ton and a 28 ton truck. Okay. So we work through the whole range. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Lovely. So, you know, in Kenya, we have some ways of calling them. So is this Migukumi? Yes, yeah, so the Migukumi is normally the 15 ton, but yes. <laughs> and then the 28 and the 30 is the 28 wheeler. It's, sorry, it's the, it's the 18 wheeler. Okay. Yeah. Lovely. So if that is there now, everybody knows. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How long have you been in this business now? Since you started, how long has it been? 
So the, the journey started in um, October of 2018, mm -hmm. late October 2018. Yeah. We launched the app in March of 2019, mm -hmm. and we've been in business ever since. Wow, how's the reception so far? So far, so good. I think we've been, we've been very lucky. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen a lot of traction in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it doesn't feel it that way when you're in the office, but it's going very well. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, lovely. That's actually very young, 2019 to now. Yeah, I guess just a bit over two, two and a half years, maybe. Yeah. Wow. So how many drivers have you onboarded so far? Um, we have about um, uh, just under 6,000 vehicles registered on the platform today. Mm. That's a big number. We're working with about 200 businesses. Yeah. Um, some big names. So Unilever's, Witterbix, mm -hmm. DHL, you know. Um, Those are huge names. Yes. You, you better name them slowly. <laughs> Thank you. I had some DHL, some Weetabix, some yeah. all that. Hey, this oh. is, that's good clientele. Thank you. Very reputable companies. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, how's the distribution like? Are you are your trucks distributed countrywide, or are we first of all centered around where there's a lot of work, like Nairobi, Mombasa? How would you say is your distribution like of your drivers? Yeah. So I think in the last year, we've really gone nationwide. Mm -hmm. So we are in Nairobi, we are in Kisumu, we are in Nakuru, mm -hmm. Eldoret. I mean, I don't think there's a town where we are, we're not making a daily delivery. Yeah. And, and proudly for the team, um, I think we now do deliveries within far off areas. So yeah. from Kisumu to Kakamega, from mm -hmm. Nakuru to Eldoret. Yeah. It's quite an achievement, I think. Okay. I'm going to talk about something because you mentioned some very top names that I've entrusted you sure. with uh, giving you business. Mm -hmm. In fact, when you mentioned DHL, you know, that's a global thing, man. Yes. And if they're onboarded and they are already working with you, that's mm -hmm. amazing. You've talked about what other companies have had with Pix? We work with, we work with them. So we work with Wittabix, we work with uh, DH, uh, DHL, we work with Unilever. Unilever, wow, that's a huge we work company. Work with Clarks. Okay. But I'd also like to shout out to my fellow startups. So, no, it's okay. You know, yeah, we, yeah, work it's with, okay. Uh, we work with Twigger, we work with uh, Soccer Watch. Oh, to the Foods. That's right. Good. You know, Good. Market Force 360. Mm -hmm. um, so we work with um, uh, a, a very wide range yeah. of, of, of businesses. No, those are amazing, I mean, amazing clients to have. So my, my question would be this. Uh, why, from where you sit then, are startups such... Uh, crucial especially to growing economies because you're a startup and I saw I, I maybe explain that in that word because I saw you're the startup to watch in 2021 I'm gonna ask a very well that's, crazy a, that's, a, journalist, that's a journalist opinion <laughs> that's a journalist opinion <laughs> yes <laughs> okay what I'm about to say who said that <laughs> I think it was disrupt Africa okay in fact that's my other question as well your goal is Africa Cover yes, yeah, I mean, that's the vision, right? So yeah. you hope you can make it. Yes. Um, yes, that, that, that's the vision, is to, <laughs> is to, is to get across Africa. Someone said uh, a vision needs to scare you enough. Correct, correct. Yeah. But now that you've conquered, I feel like you've conquered Kenya. You're now about to just cross the borders now to East Africa. I don't know if I'd say we've conquered Kenya. I think we've had a good start. I think we've been lucky, and we have a great team, which helps. Yeah. Um, we're just stepping into Uganda as mm -hmm. we speak, so we've just opened up in Uganda. Mm -hmm. We're probably looking to get into Tanzania as well. Okay. Um, and I think that'll be the first sort of uh, push yeah. into the rest of Africa. Okay. Now, I see there's a lot of, uh, and maybe you disrupted as well, some of the transport sector and how they're operating here. Because I see now Uber introduced a little bit of that. Uh, I mean, now you can do some border borders or something. I've seen even Bold trying to do all those kind of things as well. I don't know whether you're the one who has kept them uncomfortable, but this must be competition on your end, right? Um, I'm not so sure. So we don't really come across Uber. Yeah. Because Uber Freight didn't launch in Africa. Yeah. Yet. So we don't do yes. any passengers. Yeah. We only do cargo. Yeah. Um, and I'd actually contend, like mm -hmm. the name suggests, that we didn't disrupt, we just enabled. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Do you have a staff that works with you? Of course, directly. The indirect ones are all the drivers I know. Definitely. Yep. Yeah. You mean uh, employees? Yes. Yeah. So we're a team of about four, between 40 and 45. I haven't checked. Yeah. Wow. 
Where are you based? Uh, we work out of an office in Karen. Okay. Yeah, in Nairobi. Yeah. And guys are allowed to visit you if they want to verify you. Absolutely, yeah, sure. We welcome you. Okay. Yeah. So Come around just t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's talk about why startups are crucial, especially in growing economies, mm -hmm. uh, from your own experience and really what you're doing. Definitely can pick up a few things because if you have a staff of about 40, 45, definitely they have a lot of also dependence with them. And so there's a whole impact, definitely. But from where your standpoint, where you sit, mm -hmm. What would you say is the impact uh, startups have and why are they I crucial? Think, Go ahead. So economic growth comes from innovation. Yeah. And startups are crucial mm -hmm. for innovation. Yeah. I think for growing economies mm -hmm. that have some of the challenges we see in Africa today, yeah. startups help communities solve critical problems. Mm -hmm. The reason your startup makes it is because you're solving a problem that the world cares about. Mm -hmm. So in, 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 in many ways, whether they're economic or social, yeah. startups literally solve problems. You're right. And when they solve those problems, they make it. Okay. And if they don't, they fail. <laughs> so you know, I think startups are really, especially for Africa, startups are really important because we have a lot of problems that need solving. You're right. Um, I think the other thing that startups do is they create jobs and they create income. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so Definitely. you know, we pass on a lot of income to our partner, yeah. uh, our delivery partners. Mm -hmm. um, we enable uh, SME supply chains to uh, work a lot easier. Yeah, we um, contribute to uh, environmental and sustainable goals by using the existing vehicles mm -hmm. in in the Kenyan national fleet yeah. more efficiently mm -hmm. by reducing the empty yeah. uh, runs. Mm -hmm. Um, and we, we also um, um, help commu the community of drivers through partnerships with companies that are interested to uh, help. Yeah. So we have a partnership with um, Auto Express, for example, to um, inspect the vehicles to make sure they're safe, to make mm -hmm. sure you know, your tires aren't worn. Yeah. Um, this benefits the driver because mm -hmm. it means that his vehicle doesn't break down. Yeah. It means that he doesn't get stopped by the police for having flat tire, for having uh, worn out tires. Yeah, true that. And uh, on the other hand, it means you as a customer get a better service, you get a better vehicle. The mm -hmm. vehicle is, and, and for the community, it means the vehicle is safer. Yeah. We partner with companies such as Pezesha and Power mm -hmm. to help drivers finance mm -hmm. uh, spare parts, mm -hmm. finance fuel. Mm -hmm. And we also, <clears throat> um, I think last year, it was last year, just as COVID started, we partnered with Aneza Education to give our drivers' children free education, uh, digital education during COVID. Wow. So, wow. you know, th there's wow. many impacts that startups bring because yeah. we, we have a very open mind in terms of what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. but, it, but you're solving problems that hopefully the community cares about. Lovely. And so my question to you is this, because you have experienced it last two years or so. Do you feel you have enough support? of course, from government and authorities that need to always check you up. Do you feel there is enough support? Because you're speaking on behalf of many others. I've had so many sit here and say many other things. I want to hear from your opinion. Do you feel like there's enough support for startups in this country? Or is there some recommendations you'll give, hopefully, to make it better? Right. Yeah, I think that's a better <laughs> approach. Um, so, Startups work best when you have the institutions and the regulations to support a fair working environment mm -hmm. where there is no favoritism, um, where investors know that their funds will be safe, yeah. <laughs> where uh, <laughs> law can be enforced. Yeah, very true. Uh, uh, contracts can be honored. Uh -huh. uh, and, and if they're not, uh, the systems are in place and the, the institutions are there to support that. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I want to say anymore. You're, you're, you're being safe, man. <laughs> I guess how safe you are. No, but I, I'm still going to pin you a little bit more and ask you this question. There must be, just choose one. Mm -hmm. One thing that you say, if this was fixed, things would be better. It's okay because we have people watching and most of them 
have the ability to push this kind of agenda. You have the platform. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I'll take it because I think this one is important. It's not just for startups. I think this is important for Kenya. Yeah. I think as African countries, we've now ratified and signed to the African Free Trade Zone Agreement. Absolutely amazing. Amazing conversation. Um, if you look at what has happened historically in Kenya, we've been exporting raw materials. So mm. our tea farmers are broke. Yeah. Our coffee farmers are broke. Mm -hmm. And that's because we don't make, produce, and sell to the rest of Africa. Yeah. We are selling what is an agricultural product abroad. Yeah. And I think opening up the borders mm -hmm. and allowing our tea farmers, our agricultural farmers, our services, yeah. accountants, lawyers, technicians, mm -hmm. to sell to a billion other Africans mm -hmm. is the way to go. And Absolutely. that would lift our GDP per capita significantly. Absolutely. And the fact that we've signed, yes. <laughs> it's a bit frustrating that we're not yet yeah. allowing it to happen. Because it's done, right? Most of the countries have signed up. Yeah. So there's no reason why... Um, uh, was it Melvin? It's Melvin's. Yes. Melvin's can't yes. sell to a billion African consumers. You know, there's no reason why Katepa can't sell to a million. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So open it up <laughs> and let's trade. Let's yeah. get Kenyan services and Kenyan goods to other African countries. That's what lifted China out of poverty. That's what lifted the US out of poverty. That's what lifted Europe out of poverty. So I can't see why we need to rewrite the book when we just do it. I know a few people uh, who sit in this advisory for especially AFCTA that you've talked about. I really want to get the answers why it's not operational fully now. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, f I feel like they've been really opening up on some of the licenses up so mm -hmm. that at least things are flowing easy. Mm -hmm. But as you said, they need to be faster because um, somebody here spoke about what Tanzania is doing and that they are moving at a very first speed and if Kenya sleeps around they might get a shoker especially when in new markets like congo that are opening up i mean uh, we're way behind in terms of taking uh, some of the opportunities that are there so it's okay you're safe you're not the only one who said that so keep feel free feel free thank feel you free. <laughs> so uh, so guys where are you watching us from this is a very interesting conversation i want to know i have seen some of your comments i'll be reading them through at some point um let me ask you did you have an it background now that this is purely you know it, for someone who is listening to you thinking through it's more like you're challenging the status quo we only know of ubers that come from abroad the balls from there this is local this is here your mark your local so the question is did you did you have to get all this it background knowledge to do this so <laughs> i keep saying this and it is true we are very lucky right so uh when i when i first had the idea to do army truck i actually had it with my younger brother oh and he's a double degree from MIT. Mm. And so he did all the tech okay. stuff. Yeah. Um, and I did all the sort of business mm -hmm. uh, end of it. Yeah. Um, so that's where the technology angle came from. Okay. So. Okay. Love it. It's a good ma mashup there, yes. your bro. Shout out to him. Let's talk about building trust because mm -hmm. from the startups you've mentioned, even to the big companies that you've mentioned, mm -hmm. definitely there's some trust that you've built with these people mm -hmm. for them to mm -hmm. really give you that. And this is definitely something every entrepreneur wants to build, mm -hmm. especially with their clientele and customers. So mm -hmm. from your experience, what, what does it take to build such levels of trust? I think <laughs> you're asking me sensitive questions today. Which are very nice <laughs> because this is a so, business so show. <laughs> one, of the one of the things I noticed when I came back to Kenya was that there was very low trust in e-commerce. Yeah. I think I've since understood there's actually just very low trust mm. in whichever system you, you look at, political, okay. commercial, yeah. there's just low trust. Yeah. And I think that's, that challenge reflects itself in our space. Mm. So to build trust, you have to do things over and over again with a safe outcome. You know, very you fasten your seat, very you try it, <laughs> doesn't fall. <laughs> Next time you sit a bit less carefully, yeah. the third time you jump into the seat. Absolutely. And that's the same sort of thing that we're doing within the Amitrak platform, is yeah. to show cargo owners and to show drivers you can come back time and time again yeah. and have a consistently nice result. Very true. So there's an element there of consistency. Yes. And being reliable, Correct. lovely. I was just, yeah. I wanted. And the transparency that. helps as well, yeah. right? When you can see what everybody thinks, you can see what everybody is pricing, yeah. And more importantly, uh, you 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 can also see where you stand among mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Okay. 
That's a very good answer, honestly, Thank especially for, for, for all the entrepreneurs there. Consistency there, keep it on. So let's talk about uh, your operations mm -hmm. and the impact you have seen. Mm -hmm. What did you say on that? In terms of impact, um, the thing I'm most proud of is actually on the cargo owner, uh, on, the, on the driver side. Yeah. So we're probably doing about um, uh, 5,000 loads a month now. Mm -hmm. that's and huge. that's taking um, mostly uh, vehicles owned in fleets of five or less. Mm -hmm. So it's a small business owner. Yeah. Um, it's it's, it's uh, someone in a rural area who has mm -hmm. a few vehicles. Yeah. And you're connecting them to businesses that they generally would never work for. Yeah. And I think I'm very proud of that. Lovely. I love that. I think yeah. those guys deserve a chance like everyone else. Okay. And, and I'm glad to be, I'm really happy that they've trusted us to yeah. help them uh, walk through their business journey. So someone would ask, every entrepreneur has their competition. What's yours? Oh, there's, co there's a lot of competition in the space. There yeah. are other startups that mm -hmm. are trying to do this. Okay. Um, I think the majority of the uh, market is still controlled by um, the traditional broker. Yeah. This is a guy who has what we call a mulika muzi. Yeah. He hangs around <laughs> busy areas. Mm -hmm. Somehow knows where all the vehicles are, knows where all the cargo is and connects them. Yeah. Uh, leaving the cargo owner at some risk. Yeah. And sometimes not paying the transporter or not paying them on time. Mm -hmm. um, the second most, um, uh, the second uh, competitor. biggest competitor is mm -hmm. probably a customer's own vehicles. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, you know, if I said, you know, what is Uber's biggest competition? It's probably your car. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. It's the same thing in cargo. Yeah. yeah. So what are you doing to, to stay ahead of your game? Learning secrets here. Listening to our customers. And when I say customers, I mean drivers. Yeah. And shippers. Okay. Listening carefully and, and making sure we, we serve them well. Wow. I like your straightforward questions, I mean answers, sorry. Um, so do you belong to any associations or you know, have you gotten some accreditations as well? Um, because this as well contribute to your customers building trust on you as well. I think uh, as Amitrak we've been, um, again I keep saying we're lucky, we've been very lucky. So we've been through um, Google for Africa Accelerator. Yeah. We just came out of uh, uh, Ninja, which was the uh, Japanese Investment Corporation Authority's mm -hmm. uh, African Accelerator. Okay. We have just been accepted into um, uh, Bad Start, which is uh, ABI InBev, which uh -huh. most people probably don't know, but these are the makers of Budweiser. Okay. They're probably the biggest brewer in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've just gotten into their accelerator. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we've been lucky. We, we sort of yeah. somehow managed to <laughs> wriggle our way into some of these um, lovely uh, associations, as you call them. All right. I want to narrow down to one of your accelerator programs that you've been at. Sure. The Badstead. Mm -hmm. Tell us about Badstead first and why you're excited about it. Uh, so why are we excited about bots that I think the first thing is I think uh, initially I thought there were about 300, but I now know there were about 600 applicants across Africa. Wow. They picked four. Okay. We're one of the four. Yeah. Just so, post there. I want our viewers to know what Badstart is all about. <laughs> okay. So, so Badstart is, um, so ABI InBev is the biggest uh, beer manufacturer in the world. Mm -hmm. I think, and I forgive me if this is wrong, but it's I think okay. if I remember correctly, they're doing, uh, in Africa, they're doing 30 million crates wow. to 500,000 outlets. Mm -hmm. Uh, most accelerators uh, will give you exposure, they will give you mentorship, they'll yeah. give you advice, yeah. they'll connect you to their networks. Mm -hmm. uh, so the reason why Bad Start is different is they actually give you paid work. <laughs> paid work, wow, yeah. that's nice. Right. So, that's nice. <laughs> you know, it's almost like, yeah, cut the crap, let's get to the... <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we're yeah. excited about Bad Start. So yes. we're going to be doing some work with them in East Africa. Yeah. Wow. That's and they pay you for it. Mm. Right. And I think the best way to learn is to do. Yeah, get on the ground. So that's the reason we're <laughs> really excited to be part of Bad Start. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 
Okay, that's nice. And by the way, so you were the only one selected with a few others, right? There were four. Four, yes. And you're among them? Yes. That deserves a clap, man. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about this industry in itself, logistics, man. It's more of a male-dominated industry completely. Yes. And, uh, you know, you, you, you are there definitely. How does Amitrak entrench, you know, just gender equity and equality in your business? I think in a couple of ways. So the, the first way is that internally, Amitrak is not male-dominated. Mm -hmm. We're about 50%. Okay. Um, lovely. We, our, our, our team has a lot of female members. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think they bring a lot to the table. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think the second way in which we do it is using technology and the trust and transparency that we're trying or that we keep as our vision yeah. means that um, a lot of our customers, in fact, most of my biggest customers, our face to them mm -hmm. is normally a lady supply chain manager. Wow. Okay. They do right. better. <laughs> That's, well, they, they, That's are, they under though. promise and over deliver, right? Yes. <laughs> and, and so if you look at most of my big clients, yeah. the person you are talking to mm -hmm. is, a, is, is, is normally a, 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 an important lady. Yes. Um, and then on the other end, when mm -hmm. we've, what we've now seen is increasingly more and more female truck owners mm -hmm. are finding a very nice way to do the logistics business yeah. through the platform. Okay. Wow. Lovely. And, you know, I'll pay a visit. Sure. To confirm this, right? Uh, live on camera. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, that's a good one as well. Because there's a lot of conversation as well of uh, ensuring we have the balance. And, you know, you'd be surprised at how, you know, some of all this just male-dominated industries or maybe the other genders as well, sometimes when you mix up, you even get a variety of amazing ideas as well that come out of the place. And thanks a lot for highlighting that. So let's talk about how you ensure that you are constantly growing. Because a lot of our viewers as well are business people who would want, you know, we always call, call it sharpening one another. So at Amitrak, how do you ensure you're constantly on a growth path, that you're not just dilly-dallying or pulling back? That's another sensitive question. It is, <laughs> yes. I, I, and I'm not sure how to answer it. I think, I think it's the energy that the team has. Yeah. And I think it's the nature of a startup. Yeah. So, you know, I think a startup is a growth business. Absolutely. Unlike any other business, yeah. growth is at the core of what you're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. um, but a startup is also lucky in the sense that what you're doing mm -hmm. is almost like stacking an empty shelf. Yeah. I guess we call it, uh, it's, there's a lot of white space. Yeah. So if, if what, you've, what you're doing has never been done before, yeah. um, you're kind of just penetrating <laughs> <laughs> into that. Yeah. So it's about making something and letting people know you've made it and then making sure that yeah. you keep that going. Yeah. And that's what keeps you just, and part of that penetration means you can probably grow a little faster than most of the businesses do. Okay, lovely. I want to get into questions that guys are asking. Sure. So I'll be shooting them straight on. But before then, I just want you to highlight uh, from where you see it, what are some of the challenges that you're facing and, you know, or some of them that you're still fighting to, you know, uh, get yourself on a better, safer way of doing your business. Okay. So I think, and there's so many startups in Kenya, it's, it's an amazingly innovative space. Um, the ecosystem is really, so every, I think all the startups have the same problems. Yeah. But as th there's no single place in a startup that mm -hmm. isn't a problem. Mm -hmm. It's just a question of ranking them in order of what will kill me next. Yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> so you think about getting talent, you think about getting funding, you yeah. think about getting customers, you think about um, getting paid on time, mm -hmm. uh, you think about the product that you're doing, whether mm -hmm. it's technology, how you sell it, yeah. the team you use to sell it. Absolutely. Every single thing is a, is a, challenge. a challenge. So you constantly yeah. have all these balls in the air. Wow. And it's just a question of which one is almost falling and how do you juggle it back up? <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think it's all, you always have loads and loads of problems. The, yeah. I guess the only good thing is as an entrepreneur, you pick those problems. Okay. So at least you have a problem you like. Pick it up. Yes. At least you have one you like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay, let me just shoot straight questions now from guys. And uh, now you can send in your questions. 
uh, market will be here to tackle them up. Someone is saying, I have a truck. How much does it cost to get onboarded? <laughs> nice. Yeah, it doesn't cost anything. Yeah. Uh, so you just download the app, it's on the Play Store, and uh, you're good to go. There you have it. Straightforward answer. Goodness, can I just first of all read a few of the comments because uh, they're quite a number. Um, let me see, Abdul Hussein. Uh, it's 10 p.m. here at West Coast. Oh, somebody's watching us from West Coast. Uh, I like your energy, man. Oh, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Melo tuned in. Um, any investment opportunity with Army Truck? Someone is asking whether there's an investment opportunity with you guys. <laughs> will you tell them? <laughs> I'm sure there will be in the future. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Lovely. And by the way, you know, startups that are doing this well and going up well end up sometimes listing. You never know. Goodbye shares there. Geoffrey Alemba Kenyon tuned in. Thank you a lot. Um, oh, in fact, the question is already here. Are you guys thinking of going public? It's in the future. That's in the, the answer, future. right? Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't say it for you. Say it. In the future. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Doni Kithendu. Accelerators play a big part in validating a business idea and energizing teams. Being accepted to top accelerators is evidence that you're going places. Where? That's very kind. Yeah. Yeah. Doni Kithendu, you've got to share there once they list. <laughs> Thanks a lot for that comment. So they're saying kudos for that. So let me just open a different page that has more questions. Uh, let me see. Um, what excites you about the future of Army Truck? Hmm. First of all, what's the future that you see? That would be a better way of asking it than you tell us about what excites you about it. Yeah. Yeah. I think the honest answer is no one really ever knows where it's going to go. Yeah. But the vision is to be across Africa. Wow. Still tied to the vision. I love it. Yeah, that's the vision. No, and I like your honesty. Yeah, no one really knows sometimes. Sometimes no. you just dare to dream. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important too, though. Mm. Lovely. What's your biggest fear in doing this business? <laughs> not doing it. <laughs> How can you not try? <laughs> <laughs> no, I like that answer. Yeah, so you have to keep going. You have to keep going. You do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to ask another different question sure. on that. Have you had this truck driver who misbehaved and you're like, what's up? We've had a few. But uh. the, the interesting thing is we've now done over, since we started, we've probably done 35,000 deliveries. Wow. That's good. And we've had two go wrong. <laughs> ah. That's a, that's a drop in the ocean. <laughs> right? In terms of like really wrong, right? Yeah. Like it yeah. hasn't, it, it's, it's, it's not going to make it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been a big surprise to me because when you come back to Kenya like I did in 2018 mm. and people tell you about corruption and how bad it is and how theft and all this stuff. Mm. And then actually you find 99% of people who actually go and buy a truck or buy a pickup yeah. and start a business to transport goods yeah. actually intend to do that. Yeah. And then they do it. Wow. And they do it over and over and, and over. over again. Yeah. So I'm really, really proud yeah. of my transporters. Wow. These guys have held us up. Yeah. Massively. Faithful. And I, again, I keep saying I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. and, and you can see why. Wow. I can see. I can see. You have amazing guys. And shout out to those guys who do genuine business. Thanks yep. a lot for that. Okay. Let's get a bit of, uh, let's sharpen each other now. A bit of your, you know, where there's definitely like you've a, a huge number when you talk about 40s plus that's a huge number of people to really work with and of course even the indirect ones all these drivers that uh, you really have to work with as well there must be skills that you have honed over the time over the two years plus of course but definitely i see you started way back definitely you being on a track yourself definitely mm -hmm. speaks a lot mm -hmm. so what lessons have you learned in managing people stuff that you could share with people here that you know well, this and this works for me, you know. Yeah, so I think, first of all, I'll say that, you know, having a good team is, like, so important. <laughs> it makes all the difference. I think the second thing is that um, having the right culture mm. and the right environment for your team to thrive is great. Yeah. So at Army Truck, we, we bring the same vision that we bring to the market internally. Yeah. So yeah. there's a lot of trust and transparency, but that means there's a lot of um, ownership and responsibility. Yeah. But the joy of ownership and responsibility is it gives people 
Um, I, when you think of happiness, you think of sitting on the beach with sunglasses and a pina colada. Yeah. But actually, <laughs> in life, fulfillment comes from solving problems. Mm. Love it. Right? So as you own and get over hurdles, yeah. it, it makes you mean something. Okay. So if you do your job and it counts, yeah. it means that not only do you help us, yeah. you go home happier. So what you're saying, that if you have a couple, whatever, one or two staff members, let them feel it. Let them feel that they are having that impact to the end game, Correct. right? Absolutely. Correct. Appreciate that, man. I'm also taking notes here indirectly. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Um, what values are important to you as a leader, leading all these people and leading this business? Definitely, there are some things that you say this is a no goes on, and this is, this is what I appreciate. No. Yeah. When you say that, you mean within the team or? Could be you, you as a person. First. Me as a person? Yeah. Uh, I think acknowledging the role, um, but never letting that stop you from doing the hard work. Mm -hmm. And and for me, it's the constant um, um, uh, drive to learn mm -hmm. and and listen and understand from uh, others. Yeah, I think that's okay. Personally, that's that's what drives me is to learn mm -hmm. and and to help and 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 listen and learn from others. Yeah. Okay, yeah. lovely. Now, let me just get to questions, guys, that's sure. ending here. Abdi, super listener today. Wow, goodness, you have a lot of questions. You talked about insuring cargo. So who insures your client's cargo? I don't know whether you have to go specific, but do you have, you talked about that you insure the cargo yeah. for people, so right? Yeah. There's a few things we do to make sure your cargo is safe. The first one is that we check the driver. Mm -hmm. So we know who he is. We have yes. his documentation. Definitely. We check the vehicle. Uh -huh. So we know who owns it, we know, have the documentation, we know the vehicle is roadworthy and it's Definitely. secure. Yeah. And then we ourselves mm -hmm. make sure we pay for the insurance for the goods. Oh, lovely. Yeah, which, makes lovely. It, which means that you as a cargo owner, yeah. you know who's driving it, you know who owns it, and you know it's insured. Yeah. Yeah, so it's secure. Good question, Abdi, there. Somebody else is asking, how do you remunerate your drivers and make it a respectable profession? Mm. That's a very good question because sometimes when you say you're a driver, people will look at you in another way. But I like this question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we are economics 101, willing buyer, willing seller. So mm -hmm. drivers send their prices. Yeah. Customers choose. Yeah. I'm going to ask another question because some people, which is a culture I've seen, maybe you'll tell me how you deal with it there. We have guys who do a lot of undercutting. Mm -hmm. And you wonder, you, how did you quote this? I mean, but I don't know. Have you experienced this? Not really. Because for us, if you undercut, you have to then do it. <laughs> and suffer the consequences <laughs> yourself. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you'll find, you'll find a delivery comes on and there's a lot of quotes and then it sort of stabilizes. Yeah. yeah. Back to Sherpenin. What would you say are your top, could be one, two, three, whatever, are skills needed to become a successful? Let me use, add another word, hardened, hardened entrepreneur that doesn't give up, since you've seen we keep going. Okay, so I'm, I, I wouldn't consider myself successful yet, uh, but we are definitely thriving to get there. <laughs> I think the, the, the hardest thing about being an entrepreneur is leaving employment. Yeah. And jumping into entrepreneurship. entrepreneurship. Very true. Because then you're no longer guaranteed an income. Yeah. And the future is not as clear. <laughs> so what is that? Is that, to be. is that resilience or what is that now? Risk taking. Know. Risk taking. Yeah. Trying something. Hmm. I Uncertainty. Like that. Yeah. Which means you, you have to sort of see a problem that you really believe you can fix. Mm -hmm. And that you believe people care if you fix. And then you just jump and go with it. <laughs> That's a good question and lessons learned there. So there's some bit of quick fire for you here. Mm -hmm. uh, so what advice do you have for younger guys behind you, the younger generation? Because, you know, we are constantly complaining that we have a huge workforce of young people. In fact, the statistics have it, it's about 60 to 70 percent. Mm -hmm. Words used are like unemployed guys who, and people telling them you just get into business, whatever. From where you see it, what would you advise some young person there seated mm. watching you. Yeah, so 
Um, when you walk around in a in a in a in an economy where there are many problems, yeah, it's not nice. Mm -hmm. The other side of that coin is mm -hmm. when you walk around an economy where there are many problems, there are many opportunities. I like that. So those are bedfellows, right? Yeah. So yeah. problems, opportunities. Absolutely. If you can solve the problems, yeah, you have an opportunity. Absolutely. And we've seen this. Yeah. You know, we've seen a lot of startups in Africa now. We've seen a lot of them in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And um, some of them are even becoming unicorns, which are you know more than billion dollar businesses. Now. You're right. So there are loads of opportunities mm -hmm. for young uh, innovative uh, entrepreneurs and yeah. the best thing about business mm -hmm. is you don't have to be um, you, you, you don't necessarily have to be a nerd mm. you know you don't have to have had an A in school yeah whatever your natural talent is because I think everyone has a natural A in them Absolutely. somewhere in Absolutely. something yeah you can probably make something out of it it just requires a bit of hard work I just like that statement everybody has an A somewhere <laughs> Yeah. Use it. Yes. <laughs> but then did you study here at some point? Yeah, I grew up in Kenya. I'm oh, Kenya. Wangi. Oh, lovely. Wangi. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Went to my friend the primary. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's good to mention. It's good to mention. <laughs> Najma Hamida. Oh, insightful strategies, new startup. Absolutely. Strategy in new startups. Absolutely. Thanks a lot for that. Um, more comments up here but you know what we only got about uh, three minutes uh -huh. so we must be coming to the closing sections of it um legacy what legacy would you want to leave behind whoa is yeah. it too early to ask you that question but hey go ahead i think for me legacy just means leaving some sort of impact so if i if if, if you know hopefully amitrak becomes uh, something that people that my that the transporters and drivers enjoy working on and mm -hmm. that my customers trust and yeah. believe in. Yeah. And that means we'd have fixed something. Something that counts. You're and right. And leaving that behind. Yeah. Is um yeah, that would be quite quite important to me. Yeah. Lovely. So this is why I give you a part in short. Uh, and thanks a lot guys, all of you who are watching and all of you who have sent all your comments and all that kind of things. Very good of you. So but before you give your part in short, I just, I'm just thinking e-commerce. This is like the future of every business. I'm, I'm just thinking, seated mm -hmm. where I am. What would you say? Yeah, it is. I think digital is here to, it's, 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 it's just, it's going to penetrate Africa the same way it did everywhere else. Yeah. Um, you look at e-commerce right now, I think it's about 2% in general in mm -hmm. Kenya. Mm -hmm. You look at more mature economies and, and more um, mature categories, and it's about 40, 50 percent. Yeah. So it's definitely going to change how we do business. Yeah. Uh, because it's more efficient. Mm -hmm. It's easier and it's quicker. It's, it's just more efficient. It's just Very a, true. a better way to do it. So these are some of the opportunities for growth for startups such as, such, such as ours or any mm -hmm. other digital business out there. Yeah. OK, correct me if I'm wrong. Your business is a 24-7 thing because, you know, trucks are driving left, right, and center. That's they right. move all the way. That's right. And our customer care and operational team are 24-7. So even my question feels a bit invalid because I was about to ask you, how's your day like? <laughs> yeah, I mean, founder's days are always crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like firefighting than anything else. I know, right? Yeah. Yeah, you got to check it out. Yeah. Mm. So you have guys who are always constantly on the watch, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which is important for our customers and for our transporters. Absolutely. Okay, give us your party shot now. Time is over, and thanks a lot, guys. Oh, my country, all your co comments. But just let me just see one more. Maybe there's one more here. Good challenge to take up, to take a leap without income. Entrepreneurship is faith. Wow, somebody picked that up from you. Thank mm. you. Faith. Now, your party shot. <laughs> I, I'm not sure what, 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 what's required on the parting shot. Think about it this way. Mm -hmm. We have all these thousands of business people who are watching. Mm -hmm. And they're like, wow, amazing, great startup. You've talked about the future of it and all that. Mm -hmm. And you're about to end. <laughs> what did you tell them? <laughs> um, if you're thinking about starting a business, just yeah. start, worry about it later. Yeah. And uh, I'm really proud of the Army Truck team, and I think they're coming. Absolutely. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Watch this space. Watch this space. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it, guys. My goodness. Ay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually 
nine o'clock. Thanks a lot, guys, for tuning in, and um, we appreciate your time. Mac, Mwangi, amazing, good stuff. Thank you so and, much for having uh, me. You know, um, by the way, anyone can install that app, is it? Anyone phone? can. Anyone. Just can. go check it out. Ami Truck. Ami Truck. Wow. Local. Buy Kenya, build Kenya. That's our tagline right here. And we have to definitely promote and see. And hey, I want to give a shout out to my. Do you like my shirt? Man? I love it. Yeah. I do, actually. I want you to get some. I'll tell you where. It's called One Stop Apparels. Please, if you can, run it up. It'll be very nice. Uh, and they do amazing, amazing Kenyan, nice quality right here. So, uh, a shout out to them. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to see Mark in one. You have a way of just checking up that spot on apparels right there. Asante Sana. For all the business people who are watching, keep working. Never give up. Keep going, as Mark has told us. Bye-bye for now. Cheers. Bye-bye.